Yeah, so palliative care sometimes overlaps with their treatment. So sometimes the chemotherapy drugs uh, that we're giving might actually be to try and relieve symptoms rather than necessarily live longer. It might be to try and improve quality of life. So oncologists are very involved in palliative care and often do a lot of that. There are limited palliative care um, specialists around that can sometimes be hard to get into and some hospitals might not have a palliative care service at all, especially in the rural areas. Uh, most places would have at least a palliative care nurse that could help, um, but a lot of the times it's that we're doing the day-to-day -day palliative care and perhaps using palliative care nurses to help at home and it will have more of a, a phone call or a phone call away to say, look, you know, my pain's worse, what should I take? And can be given some phone advice for that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we often say very involved, quite close to the end. Even though palliative care physicians um, are involved a lot when people are very close to the end, they are also very good at supportive care management. So we would often involve someone to help with uh, difficult pain. Um, perhaps their nausea is really bad during the chemotherapy. And with some of the newer treatments, especially people wanting to access things like cannabis oil, that is done through a palliative care service. So it doesn't have to be that someone uh, is terminal to, be, to have the palliative care services involved. Um, and they're trying very hard to kind of say that this is, we're not just at the end, we want to know people and be involved in their journey. And sometimes they might be involved for a year or two before they're, they're needed too much, but it means there's been a chance to have a relationship with those people that might be involved at the end.